in this video I'm going to show you how to work with files in Windows Explorer. Most of your browsers are going to default in Windows XP on up to Windows 8 that when you download a file it's automatically going to download it and save it to your downloads directory. Most of the directories um, you'll generally want to try to stay away from but there are some directories that are specific to your files like your documents folder and Windows XP uh, Windows Vista and I don't really know for sure about Windows 8 there's really unless you create an icon to Windows Explorer on your desktop there's really only about two ways to get in first trick is to right click on your start button and click open Windows Explorer this will open up Explorer directly to your documents and uh, I believe Windows XP it will open it up to your actual start menu in which you can actually just select your documents in most cases you'll have this left pan and uh, Windows XP you'll often have to go up to the top and click on show files and fol or show folders and it will expand this side over here with the folders and the drives the other way is to click on start go to all programs accessories and Windows Explorer on Windows 7 you'll automatically have an Explorer icon down here in the uh, task tray you can just click on it and it will go straight to Explorer once you actually have Explorer up, and as I stated earlier, if you download anything, it'll automatically go to your Downloads folder. Your Downloads folder, if it's shrunk down, is under your Favorites up here at the top. And all you have to do is click on that little arrow, and it'll expand it. Then you can click on Downloads, and anything you download, it's going to be right here. As you can see, I have a few website templates, a picture of myself, TeamSpeak server, your uh, personal files are going to be under libraries and again if it's shrunk just click the little arrow to the side and it'll expand down your documents this, will, this is where most of everything you work on is going to save same with your music if you have any music generally it's going to download to the music folder and then of course you have your pictures and videos folders home group is one thing that you're really not going to mess with a whole lot it, it has a lot of problems it can be very difficult to set up I really don't recommend using home group some people have great success with it others uh, not so much and then of course you come down here to computer and computer is what's going to have all your personal hard drives this is going to have all the drives in the system and you can see the removable ones here my system has a uh, all-in-one card reader and of course you have the DVD drives I have my storage drive which has all my stuff and then you have the C drive which is the primary drive that the operating system and everything exists on you have the swap and data I've got the swap file for performance reasons set up on a separate hard drive and then of course you have a data drive here most computers for most people are only going to have the C drive unless they do put in a secondary drive for a data drive in the swap file but largest part of the time it'll only have the C drive for the most part you're gonna stay out from under a lot of stuff that's under the C drive due to the fact that you have your programs files here that's where all your software actually installs to the Windows file is your actual Windows the users file is where all your user data is if you can't find your downloads folder you can actually go to your C drive go to users um, should show the user that you actually have set up this one is CV lab some of them will just say owner or you might even have your name put in there for the user and then from there you can find your downloads directory now let's say you have a couple of files that you've downloaded that you actually want to move to a different location the easiest way to do this is to select the file right click it and go to copy if you're just wanting to copy it somewhere else or cut if you're wanting to completely move the file if you select copy 
and then select where you're going to copy it to you can go to the folder that you're wanting to copy it to right click the folder and click paste or double click into the folder right click and click paste and it'll copy that file over let's say you're wanting to do completely and totally move it you'll right click it and click cut now if you're wanting to select multiple files hold down control on the keyboard and select the two individual files that you want to move and then all you have to do is let off control right click go to cut and then take them and drop them in the appropriate folder that you want to drop them in in this case they're going to the storage special development web templates click paste now if you have a file that's exactly the same as one that's already in the folder you can tell it don't move keep both or move but keep both files and it'll append a point a number to it so that way it's it's a different name file or if it is exactly the same thing you can just tell it to move and replace and it'll overwrite the file that it already had on there creating folders is actually very very simple all you have to do is go to the directory that you want to create a folder in you can either right click and go to new and go to folder or you can just click up here at the top that says new folder once you put in the name for the folder hit enter and you have your folder and it's ready for you to start copying files to now let's say you actually installed a program and you don't see an icon on the desktop nor do you see an icon under the start menu so the big trick there would be to go to your C drive and you see the program files and program files x86 the reason it has the x86 is that is for 32-bit software this is a 64-bit install of Windows so you have the program files that throw 64-bit programs in program files x86 or 32-bit either way if you install a program and you don't see an icon we we'll use a CPU ID here for an example you can actually go to the folder of the program and you're looking for the one that's under type says application all you have to do is right click on that application drag it over let go and click create shortcut here you see the uninst 000 application don't click on that and don't make an icon for it because that is the uninstaller for the program the CPU Z application one is the actual program itself so once you do that you can actually rename your shortcut by right clicking go to rename we're just going to go ahead and name it CPUZ. And once you create the icon, you can double click it. Well, there's user account control. And the program will start up, and you have the program to use. Another nice little trick, I'm going to close Explorer real quick, is if you right click on it, on the new icon, click Properties, it'll actually show you the location under Target, and it'll say Start In, and it tells you what the location is there as well. But the nice nifty thing is you can actually click open file location and it'll open up explore exactly where that program is. Delete. Yes. You can rename files relatively easy in Windows. I'm going to use this picture of me for example. You just got to right click it, click rename. Once you put in whatever you're wanting to rename it, just hit enter and the file is renamed. That's really pretty well about it for working with the files, except for in Windows 7, I'm not for sure about 8, they incorporate a new thing called libraries. The libraries are basically dynamic links to multiple files and folders. And for example, you can right click on your documents library, click properties. And it'll show you that public documents and my documents both are listed underneath this that you have access to both locations. You can actually set that to a save location. I wouldn't necessarily do that because your public files, the public documents, if you share public files and folders, will automatically be shared to everybody. So anybody that has network access that can get to the backside of your computer can view anything that's under those 
unless that's actually something you're wanting to do. You can add folders by simply clicking include a folder. You can remove folders by simply selecting what you want to remove and click remove. I'm going to show you an example of this by creating one. Let's say you, you started your own special project and you want to create a library that gives you direct access. In this case, I'm going to just name this one Programs. And then you can double click the file and it's left click, not right. Just standard double click. And it'll automatically bring you to include a folder. So I select a, the include a folder. And in this case, we're going to just give ourselves access to the program files x86, just for example. And now whenever I go to the libraries, I can actually double click programs and it takes me straight to the program files and it'll take you to exactly whatever you actually have inside the folder. The nice interesting thing is, is if you look up here next to that, it puts in parentheses and it says 98. That's because there's 98 items under that library in that folder. Now if you want to remove the uh, library or remove folders from the library, all you have to do is right click, click properties, select the folder, click remove, and click OK. Folder is no longer there. If you clear out the library and you're done with it, all you have to do is right click it and click delete. Yes. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. And as always, watch, like, and share, and have a great day.